our first webinar of the year. <clears throat> My name is Dieter Küsel. I'm the Business Development Manager at Unique Europe. In this session, we will present our latest software solution for data visualization and analysis. But before starting with today's subject, I would like to briefly introduce Unique to those who might don't know our company. Unique has more than 15 years of experience in the electric aviation industry, and we offer a wide range of drone models for different application areas, from an entry-level model to professional hexacopters. Our offer not only includes the unmanned aircraft systems, but also a complete solution thanks to the variety of payloads and accessories that can be integrated. Tasks regarding inspection, mapping, law enforcement and search and rescue can be performed safely and efficiently. As mentioned before, together with the Skyline team, we are going to talk about PhotoMesh, the perfect software for tasks related to engineering, construction and mapping. In combination with the H520e and the E90X camera, you will be able to create and analyze accurate actionable 2D georeferenced maps and 3D models. Thomas from Skyline will show you how to install the software and then how to start a project. We have enabled the chat box and at the end we will have time enough to answer them. Please feel free to use it. Now I give way to Skyline to introduce us to PhotoMesh. Okay, so now we are going to install the PhotoMesh and Terex Power Plus on a node locked machine. You will receive from your local distributor a license registration tool. This is a very simple executable that needs to be run once and analyzes your computer for a unique identifier. The next thing you're going to do is follow these steps, copy uh, the key to the clipboard and send it to your uh, partner, your local reseller, who will then reply with these licenses. This is the SL Photo Mesh license, LIC extension, and SL Terexport Plus LIC extension. In addition, you will get download links to either of the products, Photo Mesh and Terexport Plus. In here, I already downloaded the Photo Mesh, so it's a Photo Mesh setup, and I place next to it, next to it the license that you have received. So as long as the license, uh, the license is next to the setup of the, uh, the uh, executable of the setup, it will just use it during the installation. So it's a simple next, next, next installation. It copies the license with it into the destination folder. The license itself already has the machine code, your unique machine code. Um, baked into it. So this is a node lock license. We also have another type of license that uh, um, authenticates against a licensing server that we host and we will show that in another presentation. So currently it's installing, registering, finish. Photo mesh is installed here. It actually installs two components. One is the fuser and one is the main photo mesh. I click photo mesh over here. It starts up. Currently, I'm running on a, on a virtual machine, but I will show you the quick steps of how to create the initial project. You go ahead and you create a new project, but first let's see resources uh, and license manager. So your license is valid with a machine dependent license. Then you can go ahead, create a new project, give it um, a path like this one preferably a UNC path, so uh, other fusers in the network can participate. Call it simple project. Click OK to create the photo mesh project. The next thing you will do is you will load photos, so you can load from folder or you can load different types of excels and so on. We'll not get into this at this point, but you select folder, there's more than one folder, and it loads the photos into the project. So this is the basic workflow of creating a project, and from then we'll later uh, continue to creating the actual uh, project and configuring it. 
I will cancel it just now to show you the installation of Terex Pro Plus as well. So in a similar way, Terex Pro Plus, you got a download link called Setup. You have your license, your node lock license for uh, Plus. You place it next to the executable. You go ahead and run the executable. Again, it's a next, next, next installation. Copy some of the components over. Install them to the proper place. You don't need, you can put anything here in the uh, company or skyline. You don't need to install this Hasp runtime for a, a physical dongle as you're using node lock license. So pretty much go with a standard installation workflow. This installs Terex Power Plus, the um, uh, viewer with uh, analysis and annotation capabilities of the Skyline suite. Uh, you will use this product to load the results of the 3D meshes and other products that you create in PhotoMesh, and then to annotate it to load your other GIS information. So this is the installation that was finished. Uh, we have Terex Explorer logo on the desktop. We have the license again from the license manager. So it's again with machine dependent license. And from here you can go ahead and open your projects. One nice example is the demo project over here that opens some demo data from our servers. On top of that or in addition, you can load your meshes, your orthophotos, DSMs, point clouds and all the other results. Um, that you created in PhotoMesh. So this completes uh, the short introduction on how to install PhotoMesh, load the, the photos in, create a project and load the photos that we did over here, and how to install Terra Explorer to view your results and to add them with your GIS information and others and be able to share it uh, on. Thank you. I'll take through the process of starting a project and then um, you know I'll, I'll take you through a, a project that is already um, been processed so just so that uh, it's easy to replicate on your end. Um, just a second, there we go. Okay, so I just opened up PhotoMesh and I did start new project. Um, usually it's better to locate the project in a place that you have enough storage. So yeah, these are the 45 and these are the nadirs. So you, it's also uh, easier if the data is located, if it is different um, uh, oblique angles or different cameras, it should be in different folders. And then when you select the folder, it gives you the option to um, use each folder as a separate collection. What we refer to as a collection is um, when we run the aerial triangulation, we treat every collection as a different camera. Let's see. We could jump to where some of the images are. Okay. Now, I think there's one image that didn't have a GPS location in there, but uh, what I could do is um, First of all, the icons might load a little bit too big, so you can go to the view tab, make them a little bit smaller, um, and then it's easier to view the, um, these are the oblique images, and these are the nadir images. Okay, um, and I'll quickly draw the AT area, and then um, I'll show how it's possible to look at what the coverage is. And the AT area could have a lot of buffer around it. It's just a, um, the general location. Um, and based on the footprint of the images, you see if any part of the footprint is inside the AT area, it, it gets used for calculating uh, the, the, the process. So let me turn off the images and we'll have a look. Um, so over here is where there is full five directional coverage, meaning from nadir and at least four directions. Um, over here, there's still good coverage, but it's more of a 
uh, four directional coverage. So it might be covered by nadir and three directions, but not necessarily the fourth direction of the oblique. Um, so this gives you an idea of, of where you could produce good data from. Okay, so that's how we set up a project. Uh, once we're, we're, we're happy with uh, pretty much just importing the images and uh, assigning a reconstruction area, you could just go to build and build the complete project. Each tile goes through uh, a very robust dense point cloud extraction. So you see this is the, the dense point cloud that's extracted for this tile specifically. You can see the tiles have a buffer around them so that if you load in an additional tile, um, they all merge together pretty seamlessly. So this is point cloud from one tile, point cloud from another tile, um, and then the textured model um, from this tile and the textured model from this tile. Uh, at the end of the process, we merge everything together. You can see over here, this is where the tiles meet. Um, it's a pretty uh, a seamless connection. Uh, there's really no gaps or, or any anything that would create a visible artifact. And that's how at the end of the process, we create one single 3D mesh. Once the 3D is done, uh, so first of all, it could be exported into 3DML and brought into Terra Explorer. There's also the option to export um, other formats in the PhotoMesh Pro version. Um, as well as export the, the dense point cloud, either from the photocorrelation or the 3D model, um, which is what we're seeing here in, in point cloud format, uh, the true ortho, uh, the DSM, and the DTM. So the, a lot of additional outputs um, from the derivative products uh, that the 3D mesh produces. So this is the, the the same 3D mesh that we were just looking at, loaded into Terra Explore. Now, uh, what could be done is you could see we're bringing in background data. You could bring in your own orthos if you have them, or stream them in from WMS, uh, WMTS, um, or you know from the Skyline Globe server um, as an MPT, but. This is uh, what we call a two and a half D product. So everything is inside the skyline globe and we can load things such as borders and places, roads. Um, and then we can zoom into the layer of interest. Okay, and we can turn off the roads and some of the other things if we them. Okay, so once the 3D mesh is inside Terra Explore, we could do a lot of different options such as measure 3D areas, uh, vertical areas, horizontal areas. So everything is uh, measurable and has a geospatial uh, both location and a geospatial reference. Um, and just to demonstrate the measuring capability, when you measure an area, it can either be a arbitrary plane, so let's say a slope, um, or you could do it on a horizontal plane, then it assumes that it's a plane, uh, a planar feature, not necessarily a, a sloped feature. We also have the option to snap to the mesh so that it's easier to uh, mark corners. So you see over here, I can use the snapping tool. Um, and then snap to the edges of the roof. And there's the 3D measurement for that 3D area. Um, if you have this option checked on, create measurement objects, it creates this as an object so that um, when the process is done, you can just export all of these into um, either a skyline format, fly file, or a KML, a geodatabase, a shape file. Um, so everything that gets measured or done is accumulated and then exportable. Uh, the other uh, options uh, for the software, you could simulate um, an aerial object in motion um, and you could also add a 3D model or, or a moving car on the road. 
and represented. Uh, this is a, a moving view shed, so we can see what's visible from that location. Um, you could also have a static view shed, so what a camera would see or what's the perspective from this corner. Um, this gets done by adding a view shed. Uh, even once the view shed is done, as a layer in the project tree, it can be edited. So this is my view shed. I could change the, the horizontal field of view or the vertical field of view. Um, I could also, uh, you know, rotate it, move it around. So, uh, or up or down. So everything is editable. Once you, you created it, you're not locked into that measurement. Um, once the view shed is in there, you could add things such as uh, a potential building and see how you know, th this building affects windows that might be on this building or um, it could really be uh, you know, any sort of analysis. It could also be from a moving car and let's say if a car is parked over here, how it affects the parking lot. So um, there's a lot of, of 3D analytics. You can see we have different trees here with different, uh, with different heights. Um, and we also have different types of trees. So this is tree type one, and then it's gonna load in tree type two. Um, so if you have, let's say, power line analysis and you wanna do a, a buffer for that, um, this is the result of the buffer query. And the buffer query can then determine based on a given radius, uh, you see if something is uh, within a radius of that spot. So the ones that are marked red are um, have uh, an object appear within that radius. The ones that are not um, don't have any obstruction. So that's part of the analytics that are available. Um, and then the last thing that I'll review is, um, just a second, let me turn off this one. There we go. Um, is the photo inspector. Uh, so uh, you could then visualize the images that were used to create the, uh, the, the 3D model. Okay. Here we go, uh, make the icon a little smaller. And you could click on them in order to view the original image. Um, or you could click on the model. Let's say if I want to inspect this area or this window, um, I could set the filter by direction to only 90 degrees. 360 is if you click, let's say, on the rooftop, it brings in everything from a 360 degree radius. Uh, 90 degrees is for facades, so there's no point of viewing the image from this angle. Um, you're only really needed from this angle. And then if I click on photos in point and click on this window, it loads a list of all of the available images um, that view this window. Here it is. And I can toggle between them, see which one gives me the perspective, the the best perspective that I'm looking for. And here's a good example. I mean, looking at the mesh, yeah, the window looks okay. Uh, there is some, you know, uh, difficulty in, in correlating all these thin features, but looking at this lets you know that there is uh, um, a, a shield around it, a, a net, not really a net, uh, sort of a, a, a mesh, a metal mesh, um, rails. Um, Okay, so uh, I think that's more or less uh, it. There are a whole lot of other things we could get into. Um, you know, there's a particle engine, so you can, you know, create a fountain if you wanted to. Um, you could simulate fire, smoke. Uh, there's a whole lot of different uh, options for bringing in moving objects, aerial objects, uh, building 3D shapes. Um, and full compatibility also to bring in um, other 3D meshes from other software um, or convert 
out the 3D meshes into other software, um, as well as modify them. So let's say if you have uh, an area over here that you want to place uh, and the mesh is getting in the way, you can just modify the mesh layer, mark the area that you want to uh, flatten. There we go. And then flatten the mesh. And then you can place something else on top. So yep, just uh, the, the tip of, uh, of the iceberg for all of the tools that are available. Um, and I think uh, that covers most of it. We really appreciate it. And at this stage, and before we come to the questions and answers, um, I would like to show you guys that we have a three different um, packages available for PhotoMesh. Um, you can see all these uh, different uh, packages on the screen right now. So the different is um, that at the first uh, package, we have an annual price of uh, almost uh, 1,000 euros. And uh, we have, uh, we can upload 500 images. And um, um, so the different to the other uh, two packages is the, um, the types of the outputs and of course the unlimited uh, gigapixels for the upload. Um, but at least if you uh, need to have a, a detailed uh, description, um, what is the, uh, the different as well? Yeah, yeah, just have a look on the uh, on the screen. Uh, we can even ask um, uh, Thomas from from Skyline. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, Thomas, um, good to have you here again. Um, we come now to the uh, question and answer. Um, the first questions I saw is if the uh, photo mesh program is also available. For Hello, members. everybody. Good afternoon. Here is Thomas Orlik, uh, Managing Director of uh, Skyline Germany. And uh, I'm glad that we are doing this webinar all together. So the reply, basically in this configuration, it is uh, not available for Linux. Okay, so it is Windows based product. Uh, why I said for this configuration, because there is also a huge professional configuration of PhotoMesh, which for instance can run a photo, so-called PhotoMesh master on one server, and then maybe 50, 80 parallel processors, parallel computers, parallel servers. And in this huge configuration, uh, we are also using Linux uh, computers for the par parallel processing, but for, let's say, the easy, straightforward processing in the, in the world of UAVs, uh, only Windows versions are available. Okay. Okay, thanks for this uh, uh, answer, Thomas. Uh, we come already to the next questions. Um, this is um, regarding, uh, can the software also measure corners in buildings or corners of buildings? Yeah, I would say yes, but I will ask uh, my colleague Itai from Skyline USA maybe to elaborate a little bit. Yes. Uh, hey, Tomas, can you hear me okay? Okay, excellent. So, uh, yes, can measure uh, corners of buildings. And we actually have in the Terra Explorer suite a snapping tool. So you can snap two corners in the mesh. Um, and there's different uh, snap options. You can also snap to 90 degree angles when you're drawing a polygon or measuring. Uh, but generally, yes, you, you can measure corners um, by snapping to the corner, mapping to mm -hmm. vertices of the mesh triangle. Okay. Um, yep. Okay, great, thank you. Um, just received another question from Lucas. Lucas is asking, what are the hardware requirements for the software? 
Um, he had a mid-range uh, cut workstation uh, with the Cutro RTX 4000. Is it powerful enough? Do you have an answer? Yeah, that's more than powerful enough. Uh, the software works on standard. The Terra Explorer works on a standard uh, computer and uh, basic built-in video cards. So Quadro, you know, would definitely uh, uh, make it work very efficiently, very fast. Uh, photo mesh, the minimum requirements for photo mesh are uh, an eight core computer with at least 16 gigabytes of RAM um, and just the built in video card. Um, if there's some sort of uh, NVIDIA, uh, GeForce, or Quadro, or anything, that, that's a um, Itai, technical necessary. note you've got some issues with microphone, I think. Yeah, you are a little bit dropping off and going back again. If you can check it. That would be nice. Or change the mic and talk just to the computer. Yeah. Yeah, let me check on that. Is this better? So meantime, we can uh, proceed further on with the next questions from uh, uh, our dear friend Olaf. Olaf is asking, is there- Yeah, um, that's for me, available? Thomas again. So yes, there are yes. trial versions uh, available of all those packages and um, uh, the logic is that if you can please send a request to Unique, uh, I think uh, there is a special address, special email address for this, yeah, or to Dieter, and then uh, we get it as Skyline from Unique, and uh, we send you immediately a small utility where you generate so-called machine code of your computer, and you send us the machine code, and we get you then the license, which is the LIC lick file, which you saw in the presentation, how to install it, plus the download link for, for the correct uh, version of the photo mesh. So basically, please ping an email to Unique and we will take it from there. And within like uh, 48 hours, you have your license for your computer and uh, the download link. The trial can be for 15 days, one five. Yeah, that's great. Probably it sounds a little bit complicated, but uh, at least uh, you will see it's very easy to handle. Okay, we come to, to okay. another question from Jamie. Jamie is asking, uh, can it work on a tablet in the field, like a drone deploy? Yes, yes um, it's better. Tomas, can you hear me and better you can now? Directly checking. reply this question, Ita, if you want. Okay. Sure, sure. Uh, so we do, we don't process on a, any tablet. I mean, it does have to be Windows um, installation, um, and I'm not sure most tablets have uh, the the right specs. We generally, though, uh, mostly support laptops or desktops and any sort of a computer. Okay. Maybe a uh, detail. Can I can I still comment? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, it was Jamie, I think, right? Um, uh, this is, uh, this photo mesh UAV, as Dieter has explained, is a package of photo mesh and Terra Explorer Plus. These are two packages. Yeah. Terra Explorer is the, uh, G 3D GIS desktop client and photo mesh is the processor of the data as per ETI's presentation. So this is on windows, but, uh, we have also um a possibility a skyline which can be also offered through unique uh if you want you can publish your finished project to skyline cloud and then your customers can view the project also uh, on web environment and mobile environment so basically if you are interested in the workflow where you finish a project for let's say a construction site you can load it to our Skyline Globe Cloud and then you get a link and you can give this link to your customers and they see the data on a tablet or in just a web browser. That's also a possibility. If you want, please ping an email to Dieter and we will reply you in detail. Okay, thank you Thomas for this answer. 
Um, let me see for other questions. Um, yeah, we have another one from uh, Stefan. Uh, Stefan is asking, can photo mesh match images with different ground sample distance? And what about real deep slopes where the GSD differs a lot from a one corner in the image to the other? Um, so the answer is yes, uh, definitely. It's actually one of the strongest points for photo mesh. We match images from different angles, uh, nadir obliques from different flight altitudes, uh, from different cameras, um, and it could all go all into one process. If uh, Tomas, I don't know if you want me, I, I could share my screen real quick, but I have the exact project um, that he's referring to. I can show it a little bit or, I mean, the answer is yes. Yeah. I mean, we, we don't have any issues with that. Okay, let's, uh, let's see. You think it's, uh, it's uh, technical, um, not that easy to, to change the screen right now. Let's uh, continue with uh, some, some questions. Um, we have, uh, could I make a volume measurement? Yeah, Thomas, that's, that's. Yes, uh, that's for me or Itai, but yes, you can. Yes, you can quite easily in Terra Explorer. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, do you have the ability to classify the point cloud and do cleanings on them manually? So we don't classify the point cloud, but we do have built in cleanup tools uh, for the mesh so that you could uh, flatten out planes if you have noise on a road due to moving cars, or you can clean a building facade in case of reflective buildings that, you know, always cause issues. Uh, they act like big mirrors. Okay. Uh, but yeah, we have, and you can uh, remove any floating components like power lines that you might not want in the data set. So we, we have a built-in uh, cleanup uh, workflow, though. But we don't classify the point cloud. Okay, okay thank you, Itai. Um, another one is uh, from Antonio from Italy. Uh, the question is uh, on the competition on Metashape. Most of his customer are using Metashape. What are the summary, the pro and cons for this product and Metashape? Okay, I think this um, is not easy to answer in a, in a short time, right? Yeah, I, I could give uh, the brief uh, uh, two, three things that, that I would uh, classify as the differentiators. Um, I'm familiar with Metashape from Agisoft. Uh, I, I would say, you know, one is Skyline's format operability, uh, interoperability, and the ability to export extremely large projects into cesium tiles, SLPK, uh, on the on the PhotoMesh um, Pro, not the UAV. So we have a lot more flexibility in inputs. Um, and uh, generally, the, uh, the scale with the fuser architecture, you can run a lot bigger projects if you move up to the more professional versions. Uh, the third thing is Terra Explore. So Metashape is the processing tool. Like Tomas was saying, this package comes with Terra Explore. So you're not just creating 3D data. It's nice to look at. You can also add analytics, simulations, measurements, and everything on top um, in the Terra Explorer project. I think that's uh, the general answer that's great okay thank you um perhaps another um, interesting question is if there is a specific part of the software for crop inspections for agricultural purposes um no the the for, for photo mesh we could produce uh up to 12 band imagery by the way so if you want to combine rgb and near ir into a single output or really any sort of uh, spectral band combination you, you can produce multi-band orthos um yep. so from that standpoint we can support that in terra explorer there's an API that you could incorporate, uh, integrate external tools, but there's no built-in tools for uh, specifically for agricultural purposes. Okay, thank you. So another, of course, good question is, which drone and camera do I best use? 
of course, um, at least, you know, we, we suggest, of course, the, uh, um, um, the Typhoon H520E uh, together with the E90X uh, camera. So this is your perfect choice for, uh, for mapping and surveying, of course. Um, you will find, of course, um, the more information on our website as well. Um, okay, we have a trial version. That's fine. Uh, another question, can PhotoMesh combine data from other sources like LiDAR? Yes, we can, we can integrate LiDAR from terrestrial scans, uh, road scanners, or from aerial sources, uh, aerial LiDAR, if there's LiDAR on the drone. So, yeah, um, we can import E57, LAS, LAZ with all of the attribution in it as well. So if it's classified, that gets passed okay, on. Great. Um, so Willem is asking, how easy is it to implement GCPs? It's very, uh, very easy. Um, you could either import the coordinate uh, of the, the points and sample them in the images, or you could bring in um, existing data like existing ortho or dsm or existing 3d and pick points from that to use as geo reference to reference your new data set to your existing data set um so yeah and, and we also support any uh, coordinate system projection or vertical datum uh, that is just, just a small addendum deter uh, which brings us to the topic that yeah. there is also uh, an integrated error triangulation capability in PhotoMesh, of course, which you will also, which you can also read some more details in this uh, beautiful flyer from PhotoMesh Unique. Okay, <laughs> great. Um... Peter, uh, Peter is asking the price that you showed for the software package. Uh, is that per month or per year? This is of uh, these are annual prices, so that means per year. Peter. Um, another question from Helmut: Is PhotoMesh using some of the metadata from the pictures? If yes, which one? XMP metadata. So we do use the metadata from the pictures. Um, and if you saw in the demonstration of photo mesh, when you import the photo, it automatically reads that EXIF data, uh, including XYZ and the yaw pitch roll and whatever camera information, uh, the focal length, uh, you know, the, the sensor size, uh, whatever is available in the EXIF. Um, and we read pretty much any market format uh, for GPS tagging. Okay, so there are some people are also interested in comparison charts, but this is what we will um, do later on and um, publish it on our website. Uh, another question, um, how do you produce digital terrain model? How do you determine the objects on the point cloud that don't belong to the ground? So we, we don't do that on the point cloud. We produce a DTM from the actual 3D surface. And we, we do classify ground and non-ground when we extract uh, terrain. So uh, using you know, the slope calculations and sizes of objects, um, we know how to remove above ground objects and only keep the surface that is, we consider the, the floor the floor of, of the data, and that's what we export as the terrain, the DTM. Okay, okay cool. So, um, there is uh, one last question from Thomas. Uh, can you use ground control points, GCPs? Yeah. Yes, uh, that was uh, the previous yeah, question. Right. Very so, easy to use. So, uh, okay, the very, very last one. Unique images do not get saved with orientation information. Can PhotoMesh optimize and determine the orientation information or should the user provide them externally? So the answer is we don't need orientation information. We could work 100% with just GPS, with just XYZ. Uh, we can also work without any uh, GPS information for up until about 2,000 images. 
Um, so the answer is no, we don't need the orientation, uh, though we have seen unique drones that uh, the yaw pitch roll of the camera is saved, so that may be something you can look into with unique. Yeah, okay. Okay, so um, thanks for all the questions so far. Um, of course, we will read and we will send you all uh, another email and we will um, try to give you all answers of all open questions if you get anyone else. Okay, friends, on behalf of the entire UNIC team, we thank you so much for joining our webinar today and we hope that you enjoyed it. We will send you another email with a promo code, which enables you to buy the software to a reduced price. We would be happy to see you again in our next webinar session and you will find all necessary information on our Facebook and LinkedIn account. Goodbye, enjoy the rest of the afternoon and stay safe.